Turning Pages by Sonia Santamara, illustrated by Lulu Delacree. What do you think is going to happen in the book? My story is a story about books, of poems and comics, of laws and mysteries, of science and science fiction, written in both in Spanish and in English. Even though I was born and grew up in New York City, Espanol Spanish was the language we spoke at home. The language of Puerto Rico, the island where my family came from, I struggled to learn English. Bouncing two languages in my head wasn't always easy. Books made learning fun. Reading was like lighting candles, and each book of flame lit up the world around me. What's so special about books? Dear written words have a unique magic at each step in my life. I would put together the answer like pieces to a puzzle. Poems are something, something people recite. First memory of the power of words came from Abuelita, my beloved grandmother. Every Saturday, my aunts and uncles and cousins would gather for a party at her house. At her home. After we ate dinner, the crowded little room would get quiet. Abuelita would close her eyes and recite poems written long ago about the tropical land our family had left behind. The words she spoke sent charge through the room and sparked memories of her faraway island home. I don't know how to read yet, but written words I discovered were electrical currents that jolted feelings to my li- to life. Diabetes is something that most people have. When I was seven, I got sick and was diagnosed with diabetes. I was so afraid of the big needle used to take my blood, protesting at the hospital that I ran outside and hid under a parked car. I also learned that I have to get shots every day to stay alive. All those needles were scary. I found my courage in an unlikely place. Comic books, after reading stories of regular people who had secret superpowers that could save the world. I imagined being brave and powerful as they were. Then I learned how to give myself those shots, and in time I got used to it. Books, it seemed, were magic potions that could fuel me with bravery of superheroes. I may have inspired by Supergirl. I still used to need to use an airplane if I wanted to fly. When we took trips from cold, the cold concrete streets of Bron- the Bronx to sunny Puerto Rico. I ate fresh mangoes that had just fallen off the trees to juice straight from the concrete con- coconut and marveled at the shimmer of tiny glowing creatures in the Bay of Night. My favorite time was siesta at my aunt's house in Mayogas. At lunchtime, we feasted on rice and beans and chickens spiced with sofrito, a delicious mixture of tomatoes, onions, garlic, and peppers. And belly stuffed full, and my aunts and uncles and cousins would settle down for a nap in the peaceful, quiet of a hot afternoon. Then nap time was their nap time was my reading time, and I had my trusty books to keep me company, books from my loyal friends, and made it so I never felt lonely. If she has diabetes, why is she eating all these foods? When I was nine years old, my father, Poppy, had uh, been sick for a long time, passed away. I felt sad and confused. My home was filled with gloom, but I discovered a place where I could file comfort uh, all summer long was at the nearby Park Chester Library. I wore through the aisles and touched the musty volumes until one look, book after another caught my eye. I read as many books as I could. I wanted to read them all. When her father had died, the house has changed. I was lucky to have a library that was in my neighborhood, walking distance from home. For hours, I could sail away to the wondrous lands and the stories I would choose from the stacks. The library was my harbor, and books were little boats that helped me escape sadness at home. I leaving home, though, was the farthest thought from my mind today. A delivery man rang our apartment doorbell and he- hauling two he- huge, heavy, heavy boxes that was inside. My brother, Juan, and I asked mommy. My mother told us to look. Encyclopedia is used to look up words. Tearing open the box, hacking tape, we discovered an entire encyclopedia. There are 24 massive boxes, each 
revealing secrets about the world from the tiniest atoms to the tallest mountains, from the hottest deserts to the frozen tundra. My mommy had created a library in her own, very own home. Every time I opened a volume, I learned new words and ideas that were miracles of life taking place in our bodies and outside in the world around us. And I started to think about more about my place in it. I felt like deep sea diving, exploring books were my snorkel and flippers helping me get there. Where did her mother buy all the encyclopedias? Back on land, Nancy drew the young girl detective hero in dozens of books, fired my imagination. Her make-believe life was so different from mine. She lived in a big house on a tree-lined street and partnered with her dad, a successful lawyer, to solve crimes. Despite our differences, I would doze off, picture myself in Nancy's shoes. Could I figure out mysteries, too? Books were a time machine and inspiring my imagination what I would when I grow up. We moved when we moved to a bigger apartment in the Bronx. Our new home wasn't anything like Nancy Drew's, but one and I finally did get our own small rooms. It was really just one larger bedroom divided by a thin wall, but we each got to decorate our rooms. I chose wallpaper with pictures of the constellations in the sky. I loved reading science fiction books about journeys to deep space, time travel, and encounters with aliens. Even more amazing real-life astronauts had just landed on the moon and left behind a gift of words. Message for peace from the country is back on Earth. I read everything I could about the land, moon landing that was possible then. Anything I could imagine was possible, too. Books from my launch pad sing me straight into my dreams. As I got older and read more, my future slowly started to take shape like a ball of clay that you carefully sculpt into a figure with your fingers. In high school, my teacher assigned my class a book about boys on a deserted island who went wild because there were no rules. Boys hurt each other in the chaos of a land without laws. The book opened my eyes. I saw why we need laws and rules to feel safe so that people have the freedom to grow and flourish. I did not yet know that I would end up working in law as a lawyer and later as a judge, but I was learning why laws mattered. Books were lenses of bringing to focus truths and about the world around me. Laws are there for a reason. The Bible, a special book we studied at my Catholic, taught me how lessons about how to cheat neighbors. In one story, Jesus approached by a crowd ready to punish women who did wrong. Instead, Jesus challenged them. He's saying, he that is what out a sin among a you let him first cast a stone as her at her. His calm, powerful words made people think of slowly and silently. People let her be and went home. We learned that we shouldn't look, be so quick to judge people who did the wrong things. Sometimes we make mistakes that can hurt someone else, but doesn't make us bad people. It might just mean we have to say we're sorry, but put things right and try harder. Books were teachers helping me sort out right from wrong. When I started college at Princeton University, the tree line, an old stone building, looked very different from my neighborhood in the Bronx. I was excited to be here, but I was home six times. I feel like I was drowning in everything I didn't know. I quickly discovered the massive Firestone li Library, where I could find books and everything. I was so much bigger than my neighborhood library. I studied for hours to catch up. I improved my writing grammar books. It's all good when she went to college. Went to... Book became my life preserver, keeping my head above water. The books were her life preserver. They rescued her. All that reading taught me how to keep at the farthest reaches of the planet, even a little light. All that reading taught me how to about the further stretches of the planet, even though about the little island closest to my heart, Puerto Rico. I read about men and women there who worked hard but were paid very little. I read about how Puerto Rico became a part of the United States of America. 
Just like in the books, my grandfather worked in a cigar factory and got sick from the dust in my aunt spent long days stitching handkerchiefs like many of the Puerto Rico's Ricans who came to New York. Mommy had a very hard life. She rest studied for many years to become a nurse and was able to scrimp and save her that her kids, Juan and I, would have a better, brighter future. We didn't have long tell me about the world outside but now I was seeing in books a reflection of life led by my own family books from mirrors of my own universe when I became a lawyer I used cases and law books to convince judges of people on trial were innocent or guilty how they had done right or they had gone wrong just in my own family story was mirrored in history books about Puerto Rico I saw that Law books reflected real life stories of people and who got in trouble but seemed to be treated fairly in books. Law books were wrapped to guide us to justice. Justice means treating people fairly under the law. It's also the name of what I know. Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States. As a justice, I study the most important words in American law, founding document of our government, the Constitution of the United States. And decide which laws agree with it every day. I borrow from the lessons of law books of the past and write decisions and opinions that were bound to law books of the future. Books are key to unlock the wisdom of yesterday, open the order tomorrow. Written word has been all the things to me and more for as long as I can remember, like flagstones on the path. Every book I ever read it. took me in the right next step I need to go in school in life. I didn't know exactly what I would would lead. Pieces by piece, my puzzle came together. How will your journey lead you? What picture did you like? Did you like the book? What was your favorite part of the book?